Hey, it's Ben Wise since we're fitness and this is the name game. Workout number 57 is microwave minute. Every two minutes for eight sets, we have a 14 or 12 calorie row for males and females respectively, and then max double unders until the one minute mark of each interval. Your score is going to be your accumulative double unders. So all the sets combined. So what this means is that you are working and resting at a one to one. One minute on, one minute off. You have to complete the 14 calorie row or 12 calorie row plus the double unders in the same minute. You are have to rest the remaining minute. Again, this is actually gonna be technically ended at the 15 minute mark, even though every two minutes times eight sets would be 16 minutes because that last minute is rest. So you'll be done at the 15 minute mark on the clock. And yeah, your score is your cumulative double unders. Let's get into the standards for the, for the double under. Um, you jump, the rope passes under your feet twice, you land again. If you land on the rope, that's not a successful rep, that rep doesn't count. Right? For the row cows, each set you reset the rower, so it starts on zero, and you may be sitting on the rower, but you can't touch the handle until it rolls over to the top of the minute. So at 200, you can now touch the handle. At 359, nope, can't touch it yet. Okay, four minutes, now you can touch it, right? So make sure that when you also, when you finish that section of rowing, that I know it's easy to, you see 13 as a male and you wanna pull for 14 and you kind of do a half one and you go to set it down because it's gonna roll over and it doesn't roll over when you've gotten up, make sure that you've actually shows on the screen 14 or 12 calories for males and females before you, your butt leaves the seat. So it's gotta show it on the screen before you're allowed to leave. Pretty simple there, just two movements. So for setup, it's gonna be quite simple. You just put your rower next to your rope and you're just gonna transition off your rower to your rope as quickly as you can. And then you have a minute rest. So it really doesn't matter in terms of row or the double under back to the row. All it is is gonna be eight transitions in this total workout of eight times of you got done with your 14 or 12 calorie row and you're transitioning over to your double under rope as fast as you can. This one's gonna be very important, but it's very simple as well. So just keep them next to each other. The one thing I would add, this isn't really set up, but it's more so a strategy, is that you can kind of play around with how you have your foot in the, the actual rowing straps, where it's tight enough where you're not feeling like you're, you're having to kind of pull back on your foot like this and dorsiflex a lot because it's really loose, but at the same time, it's tight enough where you can row effectively, but you don't need to push on the straps to be able to get out because it's so tight. You can easily get stuck, right? And what you do, if this is the pad, this is my foot, is you kind of slide it in this way. When it's semi-tight, you slide it in that way and you can start rowing. And then when you go to get out, people often just try to pull it and that's what prevents them from getting out. You push up, lift your heel, and then pull out. And that, up, lift, out. And if you can do that, you can do that very quickly, like whoosh, and get them right out. It seems very trivial. However, it's actually a really important skill to have um, because these transitions, especially when there's a cyclical element involved, it can be really important. And this one certainly is, that you can get out quickly and get to your double under rope. Another transition thing, again, this is more so a strategy, is when you get to your rope, make sure because you're gonna be getting done with these intervals and you have a rest period, it's really easy just to throw your rope because you're not actually going back to work right away if you have rest time. Make sure you set down your rope where it's pretty, where the handles are nice and pointed in, it's a nice loop, right? Where it's easy and it's not tangled when you actually go to get off on your rower each time. Again, you have the time, it's built in rest, so you might as well set yourself up for success in, success in the next interval because you've actually set yourself up in that way and it's nice and pretty and sat down. The other thing is, when you get to your rope, are you going to each time do a single under and then start your double unders, or are you going to go straight into your double unders? So in other words, a lot of people will do like one single and then they're into their double unders, or they might do straight into their double unders. Again, it's not right or wrong, it's, it's a matter of what you've practiced and you're comfortable and confident at, but also what's gonna not break down when you get into the workout. So obviously going straight into double unders is quicker, however, a lot of people trip when they do that, or they're more prone to trip when they do that. Um, this was actually something that I practiced for a period of like several months because I was always single, then into doubles. 
And I was like, man, if I could cut that out, it would save me a quarter of a second or half a second every single time I do a double under set. And that would be super helpful. Um, and I just bit the bullet and learned how to do it. And now I'm much more efficient and fast at it. So if that isn't a skill that you've developed yet, today's not the day to learn it, but in your training sessions, it's a good time to start to practice that as a skill. I'm way in a strategy. Let's talk about strategy. Three tips. Tip number one is confidence in the double unders. How confident are you at your double unders? If you're more confident, what that means is that you can row faster and that you'll be okay with your breathing at a higher rate and your leg fatigue at a higher rate because you'll be able to move through that on your double unders. Also, if you're more confident, confident at your double unders, you can increase your hand speed not have to jump as high, your cycle speed, so the, the rate at which you're going through reps will go up and you'll get through more double unders in less time. For a lot of people that requires a little bit more tension and as a result, it requires them to be a little bit fresher. When you get tired, it's like you have one gear and that's all you can do is like, I can go at this speed, hope I don't trip and that's my best option, which might be where you're at in sets uh, uh, three through eight in this. However, in the first couple, when you have a, an opportunity to, that's one of the things that you can weigh is like, based on how my confidence is double unders, how fast can I row? And then what is the speed and the cadence of which I hit my double unders? Tip number two is your row pace. And so already as I alluded to, this is largely based on your, your double unders, but understand that if you go out too conservative, you're just not gonna have any time, right? If you row at a thousand calories per hour as a male or 800 calories per hour as a female, you're just not gonna really get any double unders done. <laughs> but like, I'll try to actually do some research on this. I'll try to put in the comments below of like what, you know, um, holding a certain calories per hour metric is going to result in terms of your finish time. Those are gonna be rough because it also depends on like how quickly do you get at the speed? Does it take two pulls versus four pulls or five pulls? Those are all different things. But again, the, the big things here is like getting up to the speed that you can handle quickly holding that as long as you can and making sure that you get through that last calorie and not really let it spill over too long. So time to first calorie is really important, making sure that it only takes you less than four seconds from when the monitor starts rolling over and to when you actually get your first calorie. And then also making sure that, um, yeah, that's only like three strokes until you're up to your, your max power. Um, holding that the remainder of the time and then getting off quickly and going to your double unders. So, Again, I'll put that below. Make sure you check that out. I'll, I'll do some research on that. And then tip number three is breath ratios. So on the rower, you're gonna be holding a one to one breath to stroke ratio. So in other words, you'll be inhaling as you recover, exhaling as you pull. So it'll be right? Obviously it's gonna be quicker than that. You'll be hopefully up over 30 strokes per minute and there, as a result, you're gonna be breathing at over 30 breaths per minute. That's your respiration rate. And then for the double under, I'd recommend a one to two breath to rep ratio. So in other words, you're gonna be inhaling during one jump, exhaling during the next jump. So inhale plus an exhale is one breath. So it's technically one breath for every two double under reps. So it'll be like, and that's how you'd be breathing is each time you jump up, it'd be, it's hard to illustrate without actually a rope, but hopefully you understand what I mean, right? So again, each time your feet hit, you're either initiating an inhale or you're initiating an exhale as you do that. Um, that's something to play around with if you're not really familiar with it. The good thing with that is that you just count your breaths then. So each time you exhale, it's a, you're counting in doubles, right? So it'd be like uh, zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, right? On X each exhale because that's typically when you're counting is when you're breathing out, right? And that's an easy way for me to do it. Not everybody has to do it that way, but I think this one to two breath to rep ratio in this case is a good way to do it for uh, the double under. So pay attention to your breathing and how you're actually doing that in your rehearsal rounds and your warm ups, and that'll help you carry over it to the, uh, the actual workout. The last thing I'll say, if possible, either video yourself so that you don't have to try to keep track of your cumulative double under reps or just have someone else count for you, right? Because it's really easy to completely forget where you're at in the workout and be like, man, I had, I think I had 34 the last one and this one I had 27 and all of a sudden you, it's like fog, right? And you don't remember it. So 
have either someone else count for you or film yourself. That's what, definitely what I would recommend um, as a final tip here. So if you're someone who's just watching this on YouTube and you are not signed up for pro yet, do it. Protocol's pretty cool. Um, a lot of people have been a lot of success as we get towards the open. It's been fun to see everybody in the, this uh, kind of a comp prep or kind of a preparation for um, the open specifically, whether they're peaking for it or not. Um, you can get a seven day free trial if you go to zorfitness.com slash pro dash trial. For everybody else, best of luck on Microwave Minute.